Hi, this is Adele, and welcome to our second video in the workshop series on breaking through barriers in your art. This is such an important concept for artists who are either even in the beginning or the middle or the advanced part of your career or in your experience in creating abstract art. Um, and let me just, before we get started in this video, and I have so much to say and share with tips and tricks and all kinds of goodies, let me just briefly recap what we talked about and did in video number one, which was all about time limits and how they can restrict you. And I showed you how in 15 minutes we can do a painting um, that's loose and fun and playful just to get started with something exciting and creative in your studio. And if you think you're too old to get started or to learn anything, don't even think about it. <laughs> I started my YouTube channel at 65 years old, not knowing anything about videos, videotaping, how to appear on screen, what to do, um, marketing, uh, Instagram, so many things I had no idea. But I decided I wanted to learn and I just jumped in and I just took it step by step by step. And here I am five years later. So don't even think that you're too old to learn anything for those of you who have that in your head. Um, the older I get, the better I feel and the more I want to learn. So in today's video, the focus on a lot of the um, things that might stop everybody. I mean, in so many different ways, not only in your art, but even in life. It's self-doubt and fear of so many things. I have taught thousands of students and from all around the world. And this is one of the main things I hear from them, the feedback that, oh my gosh, I, I'm over perfectionist. I can't do it. And then I, she, they stop and then they put it away and they lose motivation. And I don't want that to be you. Um, what are others going to think about my work? If they don't like it, it must be terrible. It's not good. And then they stop and lose motivation and lose confidence. So we're trying to build confidence and all these self-doubts, the inner critic who's constantly judging and telling you so many things that you don't want to listen to. But it's so hard to just say, I'm not going to listen to it. Um, well, so what if people don't like it? I mean, that's hard. And there's no magic way to just get past that. But I have a few suggestions for you. And that is, if you go into your studio a lot and practice, and the more you practice in anything, there's this muscle and this routine and this energy that builds up and your confidence will grow. So don't, in the beginning, so many people had, don't have confidence, and yet you have to, that's exactly what you need to do, is to go into the studio more. And if you go into the studio or be creative, and it doesn't have to be your own studio, it could be a kitchen table. It could be when you're traveling and just drawing. But do as much creatively as you can, because that's going to build your confidence. Another way to build your confidence is by not being afraid of mistakes or failures. Don't consider what you thought. Oh, well, a mistake is just something like, oh, that happened that I didn't, something happened that I didn't want to happen. That happens in every, millions of times in every single painting that I do. And after 40 plus years of doing this, I have learned that <laughs> mistakes are great. Let me repeat that. Mistakes are great because they take you in another direction that you probably wouldn't have gone in. And they, most times, I mean, literally most times, over 90% of the so-called mistakes I make in my paintings lead to something better. 
So I've trained myself by, and again, this is partly like this self-training. Mistakes are great. And some, it, it just tell yourself that didn't happen like I wanted, but it's going to lead to a different, maybe more magical place. And another thing that people that helps with confidence and getting over self-doubt and fear is to be playful in your painting. And if you have this stress and anxiety around, oh, is this mark going to ruin the painting? Oh, if is this color, nobody's going to like this color. So you're constantly doubting everything you do. And so, and it's serious. And so if you take the seriousness away and you go in with playfulness and fun and like, okay, so instead of like every painting I do doesn't have to be, I, I don't have to love every painting I do. If I love one out of 10 or 20, that's great. You know, the other ones might be good enough and I can work on them later. And then the ones that you don't like at all, you can paint over. There's so much to learn by being playful, by practicing and embracing mistakes. These three things are going to increase your confidence the more you do them. Now, I'm going to present something to you that I like to think of, um, I like to think of this. I actually wrote a blog post about it and it was so popular that I wanted to do something that's tangible that I could show you for instance. And this is the reason why I have been in galleries my whole entire life. I earned a living selling my paintings through galleries. I had plenty, plenty, plenty. I had them all over the country. I learned the business side of it. Uh, after I did all of this, then I just, I went and to, to do, tell, sell my paintings at art fairs, one big art fair in particular. And, um, I, that was, I pulled out of all the galleries and did this art fair. So I was in the position of working one-on-one -on -one with people. I had a booth about 500 feet um, square feet. And I hung all my work and I saw in person in the galleries, you can't see the response of people who are looking at your work and which ones they like. I just never had that experience with galleries. They didn't want to tell me much about what was happening with the people and how they viewed the work. But this changed everything when I went and did it myself. And I saw in person how when people would come into my space that I rented and had all my paintings up, some people went to one painting. Some people went to another painting. Some people said, oh, your abstract art looks like my grandchild could have done it. And I heard that so many times that I learned a way to me to kind of not internalize it as a judgment or a criticism. And I looked at it from a broader perspective. So watch this. This is what I've come up with. Suppose, and I'm going to compare it to, basically, we have choices. Some people, you know, look at everyone who walks around. You go in any, in any city, everyone walking down the street, they have different clothes on, different shoes on, different cars are riding by, different shops. Every shop is different. Even a coffee shop, you go into 10 coffee shops, every one is going to be different. They're going to order some things that are the same, but they're going to have things that are different as well. So I'm kind of want to show you a comparison and another alternative to think about choices and the differences. So suppose you go into a restaurant. Okay. So I made up this thing. Just pretend this is a mess restaurant menu. That's generic. Okay for any kind of restaurant. So you go in you and, oh, okay, here are soups and uh, salads. Here are burgers. Burgers are my favorite. Here are sides. Here are milkshakes. So every person who comes in, if this were the menu, is going to choose something different on this menu. I might choose a Caesar salad with the burger with the works and guacamole and chips. Actually, no, I'm going to have sweet potato fries <laughs> because I love sweet potato fries. And I might choose a cookies and cream milkshake. So these are just choices. It doesn't mean that the veggie salad or the regular cheeseburger or regular burger or any of these other choices are better or worse. They're just different. 
we all have different choices, all have different likes and dislikes. Here's another example. Suppose you are going, this is a floral menu, meaning that if you're going to go and plant something in your yard and you have no idea what you want. Okay, so you go to the uh, florist or you go to the plant store and here is a sort of menu about the choices. Here are colors. Do you want white, yellow, pink, purple, or a combination of flowers in your yard? Do you want tall trees or medium-sized trees? Do you want evergreen bushes or deciduous bushes? Do you want, um, let's see, a picking flower, a flower garden that you can pick flowers in? Do you want an herb garden or a vegetable garden? Everyone who is at a florist is going to pick different flowers and dif for different reasons. It doesn't mean that you, it just means that everyone prefers something over something else. And it doesn't mean that the other ones are bad or, or better. So here we go. What about this? The art menu. Here is an art menu, and this is kind of what I came up with. And I could see this happening with people who came into my booth when I showed all my paintings in person. So, style. Do they like landscapes or still life? Oh, let me point here. Or abstract or portrait or sculpture or mixed media or photography. There's so many different genres. What about colors? Do you like bright colors? Do you like monochrome, neutral colors, or neutral with pops of, pops of color? What about substrates? Do you like canvas? Are you looking for something that's on a board or even on paper? Or do you like oil or acrylic or pencil? There's so many different things. And just because somebody comes into my booth and I have neutral abstracts, maybe some neutral abstracts with um, pops of color, but they like, they're looking for a landscape that's a bright color on a piece of paper, on paper, in done in oil. I don't do any of those. I didn't do any of those. And so does that mean that their choice is better or worse than what I have there? No, it's not personal. So please, if you are somebody who wants to sell your work or you want to get um, feedback from other people and they don't respond in a way that you would like them to, instead of thinking, I'm not good enough, my work isn't any good, think of it like that's a different choice. That's all. It's just a different choice. And we, as human beings, all have different choices. So I hope that this concept resonates with you and builds confidence. And the more you do, remember, the more you practice, the more you embrace mistakes, and the more playful you are, your confidence is going to skyrocket. And that's what I want for you. So here are those tools. Now, this is the second video of the workshop. The third video, the next one, is where we're going to address, I'm going to go back to the painting that I did, and I'm going to show you how to get unstuck. Everyone gets stuck. So many, Some people in the art world call it the ugly stage. Some people call it the ugly middle or the tough stage. I don't think of it as tough. It, I don't think of it as ugly. It, we're just not finished yet. It's in the middle. We have to wait till the end. So how do you go from that stuck stage and like, I don't know what to do to, oh, let's do this or let's try that. How do you get all this inspiration? I'm going to show you in the next video. So I can't wait to see you there. Thanks for joining and I'll see you in the next one.